Assalamu alaikum everyone, this is Mr. Middlepath. It has been a while. I am in the process of moving, or actually I have already moved out, but I still haven't got all of my stuff. As you can see, I have my stuff here. I have the prayer rug, you know, there, over there. The screen, go into my room, pull up bar. I don't want to record everything, but basically, I've just moved, alhamdulillah. And it was kind of in the nick of time. My wife and I were living in my mom's house, and we moved just before... I live in Virginia, so just before the governor of Virginia called for a quarantine, or whatever the order is, basically a stay-at-home order, and no one, no one leaves home. So I work, and the possibility of me getting some type of uh, illness that I could pass on to my mom billah, is obviously up high because I'm actually in one of those jobs that's considered an essential job. So a lot of non-essential jobs have been cut and people have lost their work. And alhamdulillah, I am still working. And that's kind of what I want to talk to, to you about today. Because a lot of people when they're talking about marriage and a lot of people when they're talking about meeting families, they're talking about... You know, I don't have a job, this family's not going to accept me, all of these things. But, so I think ultimately, what I want to say is that everything is in the hands of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the names of Allah is Al-Razzaq, the provider, the one who provides. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives rizq and He gives blessings. Allah gives the blessings and Allah gives the rizq. And me losing my job, so just so that you guys know, before the coronavirus outbreak, I had got the news from my job that they had run out of funding. I used to be a research assistant, working with my master's degree as a research assistant for the National Academies of Sciences, Engineering, and Medicine. My supervisor at the time actually did try hard to get me into other projects. I was working with, not just on the project that I initially started off as. I started off in a project on sickle cell disease, right? So they were doing research on that. I was helping with editing. But then there were other projects that were popping up too. Uh, California forest fires, they were doing a workshop on that, so I was helping, I was, I was an assistant on, in, those, in that project. And there were other projects too that I was helping out at, but the funding was drying up, and eventually they're like, look, you know, we're running out of funding, and we're sorry, we can't keep paying you, you're going to have to find a new job. And this happened right before I went on a trip with my wife. You can call it a mini honeymoon or whatever, but imagine right before you go on a trip, you lose your job. So that was kind of stressful, but alhamdulillah, I had the feeling that I knew that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was going to take care of me. Two weeks later, and also my mentality changed because barakah, blessings, is defined as maximum yield for minimal effort, right? And you can think of someone who works hard and works hard and works hard, he's just not getting anywhere, versus someone who doesn't work, who doesn't put in that much, but gets a lot of yield. And barakah doesn't come to those who are lazy. It comes to those who work hard. So don't think that barakah means you don't work hard and you get a lot. I want to give you guys the analogy of two farmers, right? Both have plots of land next to each other. One farmer puts in a lot of work, gets the fertilizer, does everything he needs to do, and plants the seeds. Another farmer does the exact same thing. He gets the fertilizer, works hard, plants the seeds. Same amount of rain, same everything, but... Allah gives more barakah to one farmer and one farmer just got more yield, more crop, more harvest, more fruits than the other farmer. Even though both did the same thing and the lands were next to each other. Technically, there should be no reason why one farmer had more yield than the other. It should be about the same yield. But Allah gave more barakah to one farmer than the other. And that has to do with your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah gives barakah. And it was a great barakah that I lost my job because right after that, not two weeks later, alhamdulillah, I found a new job. But my mentality had changed from I need to find something in my field to I need to find anything I can possibly find because I need to work. So I got in as a job, as a driver for Amazon delivering, right? And let me show you guys my jacket. Boom, this is my super cool Amazon jacket. It's actually really nice. Like it keeps me really warm. It prevents me from the rain. So... Got my jacket on. It's a nice jacket. So anyways, I became a driver for Amazon. I became delivering for Amazon. Not that long, like a, literally a month later, right? Get the news that 
the coronavirus has come, they're knocking out all the jobs, I'm literally, I'm delivering, and restaurants are closed, no one's going out, no one's going anywhere, but which jobs are essential now? Driver jobs, which was my job, so alhamdulillah, I'm, I'm very blessed to keep, to keep on working. While people are staying at home and they're not working, the government is saying that they're going to help people and they're going to send money, but that still hasn't happened yet. Some states have uh, cut have temporarily halted rent payments. So there are some people who are living and they're not going to get lose their homes because the rent payment has been halted. And the government is going to start sending checks out for money for people. But how long is that going to last? How long can they send out checks for? How long can they send out uh, how long can they halt payments for rent? You know, everybody's got to eat. The landlord has to make money from his from the houses that he has, from the units that he has. Otherwise, he's going to lose money. The businesses are going to shut down. You know, even if the government sends money for people so that they can last, it might last for a month or two, but after that, the government's going to lose too much money. And I'm like, hey, we're restarting the economy again. Whoever dies, dies, and whoever falls behind, falls behind. we got to keep working. And that's honestly what's probably going to happen with this, because this virus is not going to go away anytime soon, unless the video for another time. But ultimately, it's not the government that takes care of you. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who takes care of us. You know, so... Essential jobs was healthcare jobs, nurses, doctors, policemen, delivery drivers, you know. And going back to the marriage topic, right? I remember having a conversation with my father in law where he was, this was before I started working as a research assistant, and they wanted to do the contracts for the marriage. And I remember he was telling me, you know, we're just waiting for you to have a, have a job so that. You know, when you marry my daughter, you're stable, blah, 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 right? And I was like, yeah, cool, I understand that. But let me ask you a question, sir. If I lose my job, do you want me to divorce your daughter? <laughs> and I had said that as a joke, but it had a lot of meaning behind it. And he laughed and he said, no, 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 that wouldn't be a good thing. So he understood what my intention was. And I told him, look, at the end of the day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-razaq. And he was very understanding of that. He still wanted me to get a job before I married his daughter, very understandable. So I found that job, which was the research assistant job, and then we did the contracts later. But the point was that Allah is a If I lose my job, do I divorce your daughter? No. So it's very important to understand that point, that some families will ask and some families will want more. Another thing that came up was uh, the topic of a wedding, right? And I was against a wedding. And no, let me put this. I was for a wedding within reason, right? But then... You know, sometimes families get excited and they want a big wedding and all of these things. And alhamdulillah, we didn't do it. And I'm so glad we didn't do it. Because had we done it, we would have lost a lot of money and no one would have been able to show up for the wedding anyways. So doing things for the sake of Allah, like avoiding a wedding that might be mixed with women and, 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 and males together Islamically, which is not okay. A wedding with music. Now that's not to say that my in-laws would have done stuff like that. I'm just speaking generally, right? Of why someone wouldn't have a wedding or should have a wedding and also everyone's case is different so sometimes someone might want to have a wedding because they want to keep the family relations together and for them that's more important than breaking family ties and you know choosing the lesser of the two evils but sometimes other people's situation is different in my situation for example I was just not able financially to provide a very big wedding so it didn't happen Alhamdulillah it didn't happen because I would have lost a lot of money and in the end my family, my wife's family, neither of them would have got what they wanted because everything is cancelled now because of this virus. So, ultimately, how we move along in life, we have to trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even something like me getting a driver position, a lot of people would look down on that. But the people who look down on these jobs don't even have a job themselves now. So, there's something to keep in mind. And I am not bashing on our elders, right? Our elders, for example, who might have looked down on a driver job and might have said, this is not for you. They come from a time and their ideas reflected the reality of their time. So, for example, something like a driver job. The people who, in their time who worked as drivers were uneducated, had no... I'm not saying that they are uneducated and have no manners. I'm saying this is the stereotype. Most of them were seen as uneducated and had no manners and... And we're just, you know, like ghetto people, hood rat type of people. Now the situation is different. You have retired doctors, you have lawyers, you have people who have fallen on hard times 
who are very educated, who are working in driver positions, cleaning positions, different positions that is just, you can tell that, look, like this person is educated, but he's working in something because the economy is changing. And What I'm trying to say with all of this is, put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ar-razaq, don't think to yourself, oh, okay, I don't have a lot of money, I don't have a lot of this, I don't have a lot of that. I'll give you guys another story. A friend of mine, let's just call him Abdullah, right? He is an Abdullah. He has a sister. Let's call his sister Khadija, right? That's not her real name, I'm just using pseudonym. Now, someone wants to marry Khadija, and his name, let's call him... I'm thinking of a name. Let's call him Ali, right? So Ali wants to marry Khadija and he has to talk to Abdullah. And Abdullah asks Ali, remember Abdullah is the older brother of Khadija, and he asks Ali, yo, where are you going in life? And Ali says, you know, I don't really know. I'm kind of doing this college thing and after I'm done with college, I'm hoping my dad might hook me up with something or I might work with something with my... He gave an answer that showed he didn't know where he was going. And this made... Abdullah uncomfortable and he said no look man until you know where you're going in life and where you're trying to head I'm not comfortable with you continuing to speak with my sister and trying to marry her because you're not going to be able to provide anything or any stability so it was less about a job it wasn't about the job and about the money it was about the, the mentality and the direction and the position that you're going in in life this is what someone's going to look at a lot of men lose their jobs, right? And they get it back and they continue working and they find a way, right? Most families are okay with that. They're gonna be like, okay, you know, fine, whatever, you know, hard times. But what most families will not be okay with is a boy, right? No one's gonna let their daughter marry a boy. They're gonna wanna let their daughter marry a man. So one of the things about being a man is responsibility. Remember I talked about in my previous videos about strength and honesty. So part of being strong is putting your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, understanding you can't do anything without the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I just wanted to share my story with you so that in these very strange times, you have a perspective where you're like, you know what, no matter what, I trust in Allah, Allah is going to provide for me. I would have never thought three years ago when doing my master's degree, I'd be an Amazon driver. But here I am, and not only here I am, I'm very grateful that I'm doing this. Because it's actually fun. <laughs> That's a story for another time. I go out to the craziest places. But anyways, guys, take care. Peace out. Think about what I said. If you have a story where you wanted to marry someone and they said no because you had no money, or if you had a story where you had no money and you were still able to get the girl that you wanted because you were able to leave a good impression with the family, share it in the comments below. I'd like to hear it. I don't think I need to tell you to like my videos and subscribe, but if you haven't done so, please like and subscribe. It helps with putting my content out there for other people to see, so inshallah it'll benefit more people. Take care, peace out, assalamu alaikum.